Episode 231, Kathy's Decision. Trading convention? Jacob was interested. Julia immediately made a gesture, telling him to speak quietly. This is a trading convention among the human cultivators. Master, you shouldn't talk too loudly. Jacob saw the crowd in the busy stadium and guessed that the dragon cultivators or inspectors might be in the crowd. This trading convention definitely wouldn't let dragon cultivators in. Julia and I don't cultivate the techniques of the dragon tribe, so we won't have any problems participating in this type of trading convention. You cultivate the Sword Shadow Scroll, and it cultivates the five elements at the same time. It would be the essence of the five elements, and you would not be exposed. We can sneakily join them at that time, Jade said. What is this trading convention like? Jacob lowered his voice and asked them. You will find out when you get there. It's pretty interesting, and you might be able to get great things. Jade was excited, and it seemed like it was not her first time participating. She must have sneaked out a lot to go to these kinds of trading conventions when she was in the immortal world. However, Jacob became interested after listening to them. The scene must be very lively. We'll come to get you at the weekend then. Julia smiled sweetly and said to Jacob. Oh, by the way, thanks for helping us out, Master. Julia said suddenly. Jacob smiled and didn't know what to say. He was furious when he saw Jade and Julia getting knocked to the ground. It seemed like he did care about them. Even though they were both seventh level masters... Jacob was still concerned about them and treated them as girls in their freshman year who didn't know many things. Julia dragged Jade away and ran towards the other friendly matches going on in the park. Jacob turned around and saw Kathy talking to her older brother, Kyle. He thought for a bit, then walked out of the stadium alone. The Nine Dragon Palace was still hanging on top of the city with all kinds of energy spheres. Looking from afar, the cultivators seemed like a bunch of fireflies flying around the Nine Dragon Palace. I guess I just have to get used to it, Jacob said, and he went to the cafeteria for lunch. Liam had returned to the campus, which meant the clan's decisions regarding the elixirs and the Nine Dragon Palace were made. Dracon and Helen should return to land very soon, too. They had been very busy with the Dragon Palace and couldn't take care of Sophie that much. They must be worried as well. The trading convention in the Fifth Heaven will be happening this weekend. No matter how one thinks about it, it seems relevant to what is going to happen a few days later. The Nine Dragon Palace's reappearance in the human world made the cultivation clans want a share of it as well. Jacob ate and thought about the current situation at the same time. There you are. Why did you leave on your own earlier? Kathy grabbed a tray, suddenly appearing beside Jacob, and sat down. I saw you talking to your brother, and I didn't want to disturb you guys, Jacob said. Kathy breathed out. It's not like you don't know my brother. Besides, he seems to like you quite a bit. Jacob nodded. What's the matter? You seem to be preoccupied with something, Kathy asked. Jacob smiled. How could he tell her that there was a grand palace hanging in the sky? Kathy lowered her head and suddenly seemed down. She was silent for a few seconds before she suddenly asked, Jacob, would it be all right if I go to London with my brother? Jacob looked at her in surprise, and his ears heard the pounding sound of his heart. I was thinking about going there to live with my parents. I've already applied for a transfer to a university there, Kathy said with difficulty. She turned her head to look at Jacob. Her eyes were welling up with tears. Jacob's eyes started to shake. He didn't really have a reason to ask Kathy to stay. 
Have you been busy with this lately? Jacob asked. Kathy nodded. Jacob was speechless. The other students in the area came and left, but Jacob and Kathy seemed like they were moving in slow motion. Kathy stared at her tray in silence, and Jacob looked at her quietly. Many scenes flashed through Jacob's mind one by one, from chasing after him when they were picking up shells in their childhood to parting from each other. He saw the quiet girl in class at the university and got to know her straightforward and bright side. Then, when they found out that their childhood best friend was none other than each other. Is this how it's going to end? Jacob felt that those few seconds were as long as a few years. Kathy, who always wore a simple white shirt, pushed a shabby bicycle, and held loads of books, was going to disappear from campus? You will come for this weekend's class activity, right? Kathy asked Jacob suddenly. Um, yeah. Jacob nodded. Thinking about it carefully, Kathy's parents were both in the UK, and she wouldn't have a hard time studying there with her grades. She had only stayed back in the States in the hope of meeting Jakey again. But... Now that she had found him and nothing had panned out of that, there was no reason for her to stay back anymore. Jacob suddenly realized why she organized the weekend's activities zealously, why she dragged him to watch the club's activities, and why she chased him from the stadium and had lunch with him. It was because Kathy had already made up her mind to go to London. Oh, by the way... This is a book that the old lady near my house asked me to pass on to you. I wanted to find a chance to give it to you today. Kathy opened up her bag, grabbed an ancient-looking book, and put it in front of Jacob. Four ancient characters were printed on the yellow cover. Five elemental sword array formations. I also flipped through it slightly, but I didn't really understand the content. However... She must have had her reasons when she asked me to give it to you. Kathy smiled and said, How did she give it to you if she couldn't speak? Jacob asked. She wrote it down. Kathy suddenly grabbed her tray and stood up. All right, I'll head to class now. She walked towards the entrance of the cafeteria, but Jacob noticed that she hadn't even touched the food that she had bought. Jacob switched his focus back to the ancient book in front of him. Five elemental sword array formations. Without any nature essence, it didn't even differ from any other old book in the used bookstores. Jacob picked up the book and opened to the first page. The fundamental sword array formations. Fire elemental array formation. Earth elemental array formation. Water elemental array formation metal elemental array formation, and wood elemental array formation. Jacob turned a few pages. The Book of Sword Array Formations. In comparison to how Jacob shot out sword energies randomly, this book would guide Jacob to practice powerful sword array formations to increase his attack power. There weren't only the circulation paths of the nature essence in the eight extraordinary meridians, but also detailed demonstrations of sword array formation. Jacob got even more astonished as he read more. Who is that old lady? Why did she ask Kathy to bring the five elemental sword array formations to me? He thought. After putting the book away, Jacob vaguely recalled the old lady from the one time he had met her briefly. She was in her 70s or 80s. She had wrinkles all over her face and she couldn't speak. Episode 232 Three Problems at Once After sitting there and flipping through the book for a while, 
Jacob realized that he still had classes, so he rushed out of the cafeteria. Having been playing games for two hours, Sam and the guys went to class as well. They started to yell when they saw Jacob sitting in the classroom already. What the hell? Why are you here already? Jacob shook his head and replied, I'm early only because I have to occupy the seats in the last row for you guys. You are such a nice guy. They rushed to the last row and took their seats. What book are you reading? Seeing Jacob holding an old book in his hands, Sam reached out to check it. Five elemental sword array formations? Jacob, don't you have anything better to do? Sam gave the book back to Jacob after finding that the entire book was ancient literature. What book? What book? Ryan came closer to look at the book out of his intense curiosity. Unfortunately, after all of them went through the book, none of them could understand it. They tossed the book back to Jacob in disappointment. We thought it would be an interesting book. Are you so bored that you've decided to read ancient literature? Jacob smiled helplessly and put the book away. How could they understand the magic of this book? Jacob knew how much he could improve with the help of the book. Even though he had only read a few pages, he was astonished at the contents. What an amazing book! If the Sword Shadow Scroll were the technique that created sword energies, then the Five Elemental Sword Array formations would be the real practical combat technique. Speaking of Saturday, what's our plan? Are we going to the music hall first and then to the academy? I've heard that most of the beautiful girls are there, one of the boys said in a good mood after sitting down. There's the giant Buddha temple in that city. We can visit that first. Then we can walk around the academy and hang out in the hotel after dinner. Ryan joined the conversation. They were all passionate about the event this weekend. Jacob, you are coming with us, aren't you? Sam asked Jacob all of a sudden. Yes, probably. Jacob nodded. How about inviting those two pretty girls from the first year? Ryan interrupted suddenly. Jade and Julia were known as the most popular girls in the college nowadays. Therefore, Ryan wanted to have the chance to get to know them. It is a class activity. There's no need to invite them. Jacob waved his hand. Screw you! Many people will bring their boyfriends and girlfriends! Ryan started to shout. It was a trip which wasn't directly organized by the university, and none of the teachers would show up. Kathy also told everyone that there were a dozen seats still available on the bus for the classmates plus ones. Therefore, the classmates would bring their boyfriends or girlfriends. It would be an interesting scene. It so happened that all the guys in Jacob's group were single, even Sam. A lot of their classmates would be cuddling with their boyfriends or girlfriends while they would end up being a group of guys hanging around, which would be too sad for them. Things would be different if Jade and Julia joined them. It would be such an honor for them to hang out with the most popular girls in the college. They probably don't have time. I think it's better for you guys to just talk about what to do during the trip. Jacob laid his head on the desk and surrounded it with his arms, pretending that he was about to sleep. The guys discussed wildly until the class started. Soon, the evening arrived. Jacob was worried about Sophie, so he gave her a call and found out that she had already gone home. Therefore, he went directly to Sophie's home. Various hearty dishes were placed on the dinner table. Jacob figured out that Sophie had almost recovered based on the color on her face. He had been really scared when he saw how her face had become pale due to the fever. Sophie's face was rosy after recovering. However, in comparison with that, Dracon and Helen seemed quite exhausted. Jacob, thank you for taking care of Soph. Helen looked at Jacob and expressed her appreciation. Sophie opened her mouth as if she was going to add something to that. However, she held back. 
She must have felt nice when she saw how much Jacob cared about her and kissed him on the cheek. Thinking of this, Sophie blushed. That's all right. Soph has never been sick before, so didn't know how to take care of herself. Jacob smiled. Let's get the dinner started, Dracon said while asking them to sit down. Sitting across from Jacob, Sophie looked at him softly and thought, He really does care, doesn't he? Jacob didn't notice the change on Sophie's face, nor the secret conversation she had with herself. He had a lot of things on his mind as well. He asked Dracon, Sir, how are things going in the Dragon Palace? Well, I was just going to talk about this with you. Dracon sat up straight. The ancient elixir pills you took from the Nine Dragon Palace are categorized into five types. The first type is the detox elixir pill. The second is the foundation establishment elixir pill, which is used to enforce one's foundation. The third is the essence replenishment elixir pill for recovery. The fourth is the realm elevation elixir pill, which helps to increase one's level. And the fifth is the empowerment elixir pill for getting stronger nature essence. He took out a small box as he said, I'll give you one elixir pill of each type. There are five small boxes in this box and I have labeled the effects on them already. Thank you, sir. Jacob took over the box and put it away in the hidden space in the necklace. With the protection of the box, he didn't have to worry about Snowflake eating the elixir pills. You don't have to thank me. It's what you deserve. I only gave you five elixir pills. It isn't because I'm cheap. I gave you one elixir pill of each type for unexpected situations. Actually, you won't need any of them at this moment, Dracon said. Okay. Jacob nodded. He hadn't even reached the third level yet. It would be such a waste if he ate those powerful elixir pills now. Moreover, you probably have also noticed that the Nine Dragon Palace has returned to the mortal world. Looking at Jacob, Dracon said again, Yeah, I have seen that. The look on Jacob's face turned serious. The Nine Dragon Palace appears every time after it is opened. What I didn't expect was that it would appear right above the city. Dracon's mood appeared to be heavy. Helen and I didn't come back for the last few days since we were discussing with some of the core elders. The discussion was mainly about three issues. The first was about the effects of the ancient elixir pills and how they should be allocated. The second was how we should plan around the appearance of the Nine Dragon Palace, and the third was how we could cope with Henry's transfer to Soph's school. We spent the entire two days and nights discussing these issues. At present, we have solved the first problem. The elixir pills have five effects, and we stored them in a secret room in the Dragon Palace. Every elder will take a Foundation Establishment Pill and a Realm Elevation Pill. We have also decided on the second problem. We will send five of the most powerful elders to look for ancient cultivation techniques in the Nine Dragon Palace. It is extremely dangerous, and you don't have to get involved. Regarding the third problem, we are concerned that the South Atlantic has found out that Kenneth failed the Heavenly Tribulation. Otherwise, they wouldn't send Henry to our city to study in such an arrogant way. It is known that Kenneth hates that boy the most, so they wouldn't dare to send Henry to the city if they thought that Kenneth succeeded in the Heavenly Tribulation. Dracon explained every situation which all pointed to the South Atlantic. 
Having the elders take the elixir pills and look for techniques in the Nine Dragon Palace to take preventive actions against Henry was all because of the pressure South Atlantic put on them. A few days before, the arrogant tone Henry used on Sophie and Jacob had also proved that he was confident and ambitious. It wouldn't be too long before they tried to take Sophie away. Under the pressure of the South Atlantic's absolute force, Henry, their crown prince, could get anything he wanted. If it weren't because of the ancient elixir pills that Jacob took back from the Nine Dragon Palace, the North Atlantic would almost lose hope. Although the North Atlantic Dragon Clan's businesses were operated successfully on land, and they possessed an enormous amount of wealth, it would still suffer from the force of the South Atlantic if it lost the threat and military power. The South Atlantic would attack them as soon as the situation with the Nine Dragon Palace was over. Henry's transfer to their city and enrollment in Soph's high school was just a signal. Well, let's start dinner. Helen picked up her spoon. North Atlantic was going to send five elders to contend for the treasures in the Nine Dragon Palace. The rest of the elders would be rushing the intake of the elixir pills, hoping that some of them would break through to eighth level. Only under this circumstance would they have a chance to fight against the South Atlantic. Thinking of this, Helen started to sigh in despair. She had already made up her mind that she would expel Sophie from the dragon tribe and make her into a mortal. Jacob would be able to take care of her for the rest of her life then. The atmosphere started to get gloomy. Sophie also frowned in worry and didn't say a word. Episode 233, Becoming One with the Swords Jacob asked Helen after dinner, Helen, do you know anywhere nearby I can cultivate? Cultivate? You mean cultivating your sword energies? Helen asked. Yes, I want to go somewhere to practice a bit. Jacob nodded and stood up. Our backyard will be fine. We set up an isolation array formation there already. You can go to the attic on the third floor if you want to cultivate, and you can use the backyard if you want to practice combat techniques, Helen said. Okay. Jacob opened the back door of the house and walked to the backyard. Besides the flowy bamboo grove and garage, the backyard was extremely quiet. Moving along the precise pattern of the veins, the five elemental sword energies converged in Jacob's body. It then crawled to the surface of the skin after going through the acupoints and meridians, becoming one with the swords. Fire elemental array formation. Nine sword energies were shot out neatly at the same time, forming a small but terrifying sword array formation. The fire went up in the sky as if it was going to burn down everything. The nine sword energies transformed into nine phantoms, forming a circle as they spun around. A burned brown hole was created on the ground five meters away from Jacob. What an incredible sword array formation! Jacob was amazed. He used to throw the sword energies randomly to catch his opponents off guard. However, that kind of attack usually didn't do anything. It would be different if he organized his sword energies this way. The damage of a sword array formation was much stronger than that aggregate of the nine individual sword energies. Through exploiting the sword array formations, Jacob finally understood that he didn't have to use his palms or fingers to shoot out sword energies. Any veins in his body could be the path of the sword energies. The sword energies followed the heart, and every acupoint in his body was a potential exit for them. 
That was the so-called becoming one with the swords. If he reached the highest level of sword shadow scroll, the sword energies he sent out would be lightning sword energies. Moreover, every single pore on his body would be able to shoot them out. The millions of pores on his body could shoot out millions of sword energies at once. Who could block or dodge such an attack? Jacob rested for a while after trying out the fire elemental array formation. Then he started to use the water elemental essence in his body to try out the water elemental array formation. Similarly, nine sword energies came out of the nine acupoints in Jacob's body and they formed the water elemental array formation and rushed forward with the movement of Jacob's hands. The spirit of water never ends and only goes forward with great strength and vigor. Nine sword energies connected to form a giant dragon that was flying forward. The water elemental essence that seemed soft and weak rushed into a thick bamboo in the grove, shaking the bamboos. After everything calmed down, there was a bowl-sized hole in the center of the bamboo. Everybody knew that bamboo was firm and tenacious. However, a hole on the bamboo without having its body destroyed. This showed how powerful and controlled the water elemental array formation was. Jacob mobilized the essences in his body. Wood elemental array formation. A spinning disc formed by nine wood elemental sword energies dropped from the sky. It created a hole that was two meters in diameter and tens of centimeters deep. Earth elemental array formation. Nine sword energies formed into a ball that rolled forward at high speed. It then exploded abruptly and the sword energies rapidly shot into nine different directions. Two of the sword energies went through the garage wall, leaving two holes in it. Having no time to pay attention to that, Jacob tried the metal elemental array formation. A white light flashed by and nine metal elemental sword energies turned into a sword rain, stabbing at the place where Jacob pointed to. They landed like arrows and pierced into the ground. Nine holes suddenly appeared on the firm ground in the backyard. It wasn't hard to imagine what would happen if they landed on a human's body. Compared with the sword array formations, Jacob's way of using his sword energies was pathetic. He withdrew his nature essence and looked around. The bamboos on one side of the yard were leaning against each other, and the biggest bamboo had a big hole in it. The flowers and grass were cut, and the clay pots were broken. The garage wall that was facing the yard had two big holes in it, and about a dozen deep holes could be seen on the ground. It looked like the scene after a hurricane. Jacob had not expected that the sword array formations would be so powerful. He was wondering how to apologize to Dracon for the damage when he heard someone clapping from behind him. He turned and saw Dracon smiling at him while standing at the back door. Oh, sir, I'm so sorry for the mess. Jacob looked around and apologized. It's okay. Dracon smiled graciously. You're only at second level, right? I had never imagined that the Sword Shadow Scroll could be so powerful. It seems that we judged it wrongly in the past, and it looks like Kenneth made the right decision in choosing the Sword Shadow Scroll this time around over his previous cultivation technique. Did Elder Kenneth also choose this cultivation technique? Jacob was surprised. Yeah. He once tested you and found that your technique had great potential. Therefore, he took the technique with him when he left the Dragon Palace, Dracon said. Jacob nodded. After failing the Heavenly Tribulation, Kenneth had lost all of his cultivation strength, even though the Array Formations and the altar the North Atlantic Dragon Clan put together saved his life. 
However, the minimal five elemental essences he had afterward gave him a chance to cultivate the Sword Shadow Scroll, which required steady cultivation of all five elements simultaneously. Despite the slow speed of the Sword Shadow Scroll, Kenneth's cultivation experience over the past 200 years would help him cultivate at a faster pace. After a few years of hard work, Kenneth would regain his great power again. Besides, North Atlantic now had a stock of over 200 godly elixir pills. For him, his failure was a blessing in disguise. Hey, what are you guys talking about? Helen walked to the back door, drying her hands. She had just finished washing the dishes. When she saw the mess in the backyard, her eyes widened. Her beloved orchids only had a few petals left. Jacob's cultivation strength has improved. Dracon looked at her, a little embarrassed as well. The orchids. Tomorrow, I'll go with you to get some replacements. Since they are ruined by Jacob's cultivation strength, I have no problem with it. Helen smiled helplessly. In fact, the orchids in the backyard had cost her a lot of money and time. She poured a lot of attention into them and had planned to move them into the house that night. But... I'm not mad at you for ruining the plants. The backyard is too small for you. I thought you wanted to practice sword energies and didn't expect it would be such a big upheaval. However, I will recommend one place for you to practice in, Helen said. Where? Jacob asked. His exhilaration dimmed at the sight of the mess he caused in the yard. He felt quite guilty and wanted to offer compensation, but he knew it was meaningless. If you want a spacious place to practice your techniques, you can go to Elder Frank's Martial Arts School, Helen said. Jacob suddenly remembered that Elder Frank owned a large martial arts school, among other businesses such as restaurants, vacation resorts, and yachts. The school was the place they trained guards for North Atlantic's businesses, and it could provide a big space for Jacob to practice the large-scale sword array formations. That's a great idea. I'll go there and have a look when I have time. Jacob nodded. Recently, the core elders of North Atlantic had been extremely busy with the business of the Nine Dragon Palace, and Jacob didn't want to bother Elder Frank before it was over. By the way, have you read the architecture books yet? Helen asked. I've almost finished reading the books you gave me. However, I'm busy this weekend, and I'm afraid that I can't help you in your studio, Jacob answered. That's okay. I can't go there this weekend either. We can go next weekend, Helen smiled mildly. Well then, I'll head back now, Jacob said as he looked around at the ruined plants. Okay, Dracon and Helen nodded. Oh, one more thing. Jacob stopped at the door. Susan is planning to break into the Nine Dragon Palace. Do you think it'll be against the rules if I join her? Episode 234 The Weekend Trip Helen and Dracon hesitated for a few seconds at Jacob's question. As an inspector, Susan has mastered many mystic techniques. You should be fine to go with her, Dracon said finally. It would be better if Jade and Julia are willing to join you. They know a lot of stuff that we don't, and will give you a great advantage in the Nine Dragon Palace, Helen added. With so many forces trying to make a go at the Nine Dragon Palace, North Atlantic would need to keep some forces in their own Dragon Palace to protect it. They would then send the rest of the elders to the Nine Dragon Palace. 
After all, more people going meant greater hope of getting treasures from it. With Susan leading the team, Jacob's safety was guaranteed. If they could bring back another 200 to 300 godly elixir pills, the North Atlantic Dragon Clan would be ultra-rich. If the pills were used properly, many cultivation masters would emerge in the next hundred years. After getting Dracon and Helen's approval, Jacob began to make plans. If his last trip into the Nine Dragon Palace were a practice test, then the trip next week would be the finals. The trading convention on Fifth Heaven was the preparation before the test. Any cultivation sect with moderate power would want to enter the Nine Dragon Palace and find treasures. Please tell Soph that I'll have no time to tutor her in the next few days. I'll resume the tutoring sessions next week, Jacob said when he went out the door. Helen and Dracon nodded, knowing that he would immerse himself in preparations. Dracon had high hopes for Jacob after witnessing the great power of the Sword Shadow Scroll. He imagined the awe-inspiring scene where a top-tier, eighth-level master like Kenneth unleashed this technique at full strength. The five elemental array formation made of dense sword energies would defeat a troop of tens of thousands of cultivators, not to mention the heavenly tribulation. Jacob had steadily opened a brand new way of cultivation. The more Dracon thought about it, the more hope he had about the North Atlantic's future. Oblivious to Dracon's high hopes for him, Jacob took a bus and returned to school. Friday passed in reading, cultivating, and classes. Finally, Saturday morning arrived. Yes! Ryan came running into Jacob's dorm, effectively waking everyone up, and laughed. Guys, it's Saturday. Time for us to go on the weekend trip. It's going to be amazing. All of Jacob's friends were so excited as if they were going to a carnival. The bus Kathy booked was waiting for them at the roadside in front of the student dorm area. Shortly, Kathy and the other girls came. Sitting in the back row of the bus, one of the guys bumped Jacob with his elbow and asked, Hey, is that Kathy? Jacob had been reading. He looked up and saw Kathy walking along the aisle of the bus. The tall figure, elegant aura, and fashionable clothes. If not for the familiar face, Jacob wouldn't have recognized her. Kathy has the potential of becoming a model or something, Ryan mumbled beside them. As Kathy strolled toward the back rows of the bus, the guy's hearts began to race. Today, she had the elegance and confidence of a celebrity. Kathy, let's sit here. A girl pulled her to a seat, several rows before Jacob and his buddies. The guys were disappointed. A few minutes later, the guys with girlfriends began to arrive. Ryan and the other single guys were jealous as they watched them get on the bus hand in hand. Jacob, how come Jade and Julia are not here? Ryan asked Jacob. I never said they would come, Jacob replied. What a shame, another one complained. A group of single guys touring a strange city. That's no fun. The guys who led girlfriends onto the bus all turned to look at Kathy sitting by the window when they passed. Not recognizing her, they thought she was a friend someone brought on the trip. Their girlfriends all whispered at them, asking, Who is she? The girls all felt like they should have tried harder, going by Kathy's dazzling and straightforward elegance. To satisfy their boyfriend's vanity, all of them dressed up, but obviously they were overshadowed by Kathy. After everyone had taken a seat, Kathy stood up and called out to the driver, Sir, everyone is here. Let's go. The bus drove slowly, and the sunshine outside made it look like a day in spring. Kathy sat back down and took out a novel from her backpack. She began to read quietly while leaning against the window. Sunlight shone on her through the window pane. 
Half of her body was in the sunshine, while the other half was in the shade. I didn't notice that Kathy's so pretty, Sam exclaimed in appreciation while eating chips. She has never dressed up before. I told you that our class president's beautiful, Ryan said with an attitude. Through the slits between the chairs before him, Jacob glanced at Kathy, but didn't join their discussion. He resumed his reading of the architectural design book. Kathy was usually a bossy class president, but she would be gone shortly after this weekend trip, which is why she just wanted to enjoy it as much as she could. In fact, Kathy didn't care about the small power attached to the title of class president. She just wanted to do something for the class and create a happy memory. The bus left the city and entered the highway. All of them began to pass around the food they bought in the store last night. The bus reached its destination in their high-spirited talks. Here we are, the driver yelled before stopping the bus on the side of the road. Then the door slid open. Thank you. Please come back to pick us up at about four o'clock tomorrow afternoon. Kathy stood up and thanked the bus driver. She called out, Here we are. Everyone, get off the bus. She looked like an energetic tour guide, and her excellent organizational skills made it an easy job for her. The guys got excited and walked down the bus to breathe in the fresh air of a different city. Theirs was a small city with nothing much to do outside their campus, so visiting a different place had everyone buzzing. Kathy stood by the roadside and told the group, we can visit the Buddhist temple this morning and have lunch together. After that, we have no more group activities. In the evening, if you like, we can explore a bit of the nightlife together. Tomorrow morning, we have no group activities. After lunch, let's gather together and go to watch the basketball match. Since it was a rare opportunity for the classmates to enjoy some time together, and the trip gave them lots of free time, everyone agreed to the plan. Seeing everyone agreeing to tour the Buddhist temple together, Kathy led the group to the motel she had booked their rooms in. Put your bags in your rooms, and we'll go to the temple without any burdens. Okay. Following the excitement of Kathy, everyone looked high-spirited. Excellent weather and a cozy room. Everything was perfect. After entering the motel... Kathy got the keys to the rooms she had booked and began to allocate them. She placed two people in each room until she only had one key left in her hand. Sam needs to report back to the basketball team tonight, so Jacob has a room to himself. Kathy handed the last key to Jacob. When Kathy handed the key to Jacob, her fingertips touched his palm. Her fingertips were a bit cold. Jacob looked up, but Kathy had turned her head away, calling out in a joyous tone, Okay, everyone put your bags in your rooms and come down to the hall in two minutes. We'll go from here. Okay, they scattered. Cool, you have the room to yourself? Carrying a backpack, Ryan nudged Jacob with his shoulder. Not cool at all. I'll be bored by myself. Jacob rolled his eyes. Do you want me to keep you company tonight? One of his roommates offered. Jacob thought about having the space to cultivate and replied, No, it's okay. I'll be fine. His room faced the south with proper ventilation and sunshine. It was a spacious room, and Jacob suspected that Kathy had given him a good room with her power. He tried the TV and the shower and found no problem with them. Leaving his bag in the room, Jacob took the key and went down to the hall. Episode 235 Friends Playing Matchmakers As the class president, Kathy was already waiting in the hall. Besides her, Jacob was the first one to get down to the hall. The others were still in their rooms. After all, this was their first class trip, and they were all excited about the prospect of staying the night in a motel. 
In the dorms, not everyone was placed with their best friends or partners, so this was like a party for them. Jacob faked a cough and walked over. Hey, who are you sharing with? I have the room to myself tonight as well. My roommate was supposed to share the room with me, but she now wants to stay over at her aunt's since she lives here, Kathy said with a smile. Oh, Jacob looked at her and didn't know what to say next. Kathy gazed at him, at a loss for words as well. They both then waited there in awkward silence as neither knew how to keep the conversation going. This was new for them as over the past few months they had become pretty comfortable with each other and their conversations usually flowed easily. After everyone had come down to the hall, Kathy stood on her tiptoes and counted. Then she said, The temple is not far from here. We can walk it up. They followed Kathy to the Buddhist temple two blocks away like a group of elementary students who had just gotten off from school. Jacob looked up at the sky and found that it was clear without the Nine Dragon Palace blocking the sunshine. He looked in the direction of their city and caught a glimpse of the Nine Dragon Palace which was still hovering in the air. They passed the main gate and entered the Buddhist temple which had green trees, stone steps, red walls, yellow tiles, and incense fragrance. Shortly after, they divided into several smaller groups. While Kathy walked in front of them, Ryan pushed Jacob forward abruptly. Unprepared, Jacob was pushed several steps forward to Kathy's side. Not wanting to be the third wheel, Sam turned back and asked, Ryan, do you have anything to eat? I'm a bit hungry. Ditched by the guys, Kathy and Jacob were left walking together in the front of the group. Of course, they understood their friend's matchmaking efforts, and they could see that their intentions were not bad. Oh, about the book you gave me, the one that you got from that old woman. Where did she get it? After a few steps, Jacob finally found a topic and broke the silence. I don't know. The last time when I visited her on my way back home, she just gave it to me, Kathy answered. The guys and girls walking behind them began whispering to each other. Don't you feel that Kathy and Jacob are quite a match? Yeah, I used to think that Jacob's quite ordinary, but recently I found him more and more handsome, and Kathy looks more beautiful each day. They could be a perfect couple. Kathy once said that she wouldn't get a boyfriend until the third year, but I think she likes Jacob. Anyways, looking at them, walking together, they match each other perfectly. Kathy and Jacob walked at a leisurely pace in the front, and the people following them found them walking together quite lovely. In their minds, Kathy and Jacob were already a couple. Their auras were in harmony with each other, giving people a peaceful and wondrous feeling. Next time you go and visit her, I'll go with you, Jacob said to Kathy, stepping on the fallen leaves on the stairs. Okay. Kathy nodded slightly. The majestic Grand Hall entered their sight. They looked back and found that the others in their group had fallen behind. Come on, catch up. Kathy waved her hand and called. Would you like to draw a straw? A little monk walked over and asked Kathy after they had entered the hall. After a moment of hesitation, Kathy took the draw box and shook out a wooden straw. Please go to the side hall on the right for the interpretation, the little monk said. Seeing that she had drawn a straw, everyone else wanted to hear the interpretation. They urged Kathy to go and hear it. Kathy smiled and went to the interpretation room. The interpreter was an old monk. When Kathy told him the number of her straw, the old monk looked at her and his eyes turned from tranquil to confused. Here are the words on your draw. Relax and everything will be fine. Important people will help you reach highs and pass difficulties. Restraint is crucial in strategy. Think twice before acting. In the end, sickness gets cured 
and water comes to the dried up well. The old monk read out the interpretation and asked, What do you want to interpret? Kathy bit her lip. Love life. The guys standing behind her cheered. The old monk coughed. They realized that they were in the quiet place of a temple and shut up immediately. In the past, Kathy would have blushed at their cheers, but today she looked very serious. You have a unique fate, and I'm uncertain about it. However, I'll give you a piece of advice. Your loved one is by your side, which is a blessing and torture. Stay or go, you must follow your heart, the old monk said. Kathy furrowed her brows while she thought about the old monk's words. She was surprised that she was trying to find an answer in the straw. After all, she had never believed in such things before. Kathy, is the reading good? The guys asked her immediately. Kathy said with a bitter smile, It's okay. She turned back to the old monk. Thank you. No problem. Take care. The old monk nodded slightly at Kathy and didn't even ask for any payment for the interpretation. Kathy turned to leave and everyone else followed behind her. The old monk turned back to his meditation, but his gaze followed Jacob when he walked out. Strange. He is still young, but he has the presence of dragons and tigers. In ancient times, he would have been a figure like an emperor. He wanted to give Jacob some advice, but he decided against it after some thinking. This young man had masters supporting them and didn't need his feeble help. He looked toward the sky and felt like there was something up there, but he couldn't pinpoint what it was. Well, I'll never reach level 7 chi refinement realm in my lifetime. The old monk picked up his teacup and sipped the special tea, not knowing that the young man he had just seen had already broken through the first level, the equivalent of the foundation establishment realm, and was close to the third level, the equivalent of the core formation realm. In the world of cultivation, the old monk who was only on level 6 chi refinement realm, should have called Jacob Grandmaster. They walked through a few temples and climbed over the hill to get to where the Great Pagoda was located. For a lot of people, most large-scale temples were similar. However, it was a lot of fun when they came together and filled the trip with laughter. Ryan, in particular, took up the role of a wicked tour guide and explained all sorts of things using his own ridiculous logic, as if he knew a lot about them. The other students laughed at his strange stories and, at the same time, liked his humorous side. Kathy was very happy as well. However, there was still a hint of worry on her face as she walked beside Jacob. They climbed to the top of the pagoda to enjoy the brilliant view and refreshing breeze. There were seven floors in the pagoda, and they could see all the temples from the observation deck on the seventh floor. There were busy streets and crowded buildings outside of the red walls. Kathy held on to the railing, and her bright eyes stared at the sky. Jacob felt sorry for Kathy as she was enjoying the scenery all by herself. He walked over and said, This view is pretty decent. Kathy turned to him and nodded with a smile. The others chatted around without even paying much attention to the scenery. Jacob and Kathy, on the other hand, stood side by side without many words. Did I bother you too much before? She suddenly asked. It's all right. You're the class president, so it was your duty. Jacob said lightly. Kathy looked at Jacob as if she wanted to say something else. However, she kept it to herself. Jacob looked into the temples with golden glazed tiles and thought to himself, Would I miss the person who micromanages me if she stopped one day? Come on, let's get down, 
It's about time for lunch. Kathy breathed in heavily and said. She turned to Sam and the guys. Come on, we're going to eat. Jacob is so dumb. Sam gritted his teeth after seeing Jacob leaving the platform, spacing out. They all thought that Jacob and Kathy would make the perfect pair and were confused as to why neither of them was making a move. If only they knew and understood the delicate nature of their friendship and the other ties that they both already had. Episode 236 Kathy, Don't Go The group of people left the temple and headed to a restaurant nearby. Everyone was cheerful and happy. There was some free time after lunch. Sam wanted to go to karaoke, and the guys who came with their girlfriends agreed to go. Jacob was forced to join by Sam. They thought Kathy, as the leader, would be joining as well but she said that she was tired and wanted to go back to the motel and rest. A few other people had their own plans, so Sam and about 20 other people headed toward the place they found out had a karaoke setup. The afternoon passed by quickly. Jacob felt the pressure as he watched the others sing cheerfully. You're so dull. If Sam knew that Kathy was leaving, yet Jacob hadn't taken any action... He would have killed Jacob. If Sam knew that Kathy grew up together with Jacob and waited for him for over ten years, this self-proclaimed Cupid would have killed him a million times. Sam had to report to the basketball team after dinner, and Jacob and the guys went back to the motel. Jacob thought for a while in the empty room since he was still worried about Kathy. Then he took the key and left his room. He knocked on Kathy's door, which was on the same floor. Wait a second. Kathy answered from inside and only opened the door after about a minute. She was surprised to see Jacob instead of the other girls in the class. Then she gave him a weird look. Jacob felt sorry for her when he noticed the tiredness in her eyes. Did you eat yet? Jacob asked. I didn't go out, so I just had some snacks that I brought. Kathy swept her hair behind her ears and said, Let me take you out for dinner. Jacob thought for a bit and offered. It's okay, I'm not hungry. Kathy smiled. Did you cry? Jacob asked something that he shouldn't have asked. No. Kathy rubbed her eyes. I was taking a shower and the shampoo got into my eyes. Jacob noticed that she was in the same outfit as earlier. He knew that Kathy was so anxious and upset that she couldn't even make up a better lie. Rest up and let's go to the night market later, Jacob said. Kathy asked in surprise, Just us? Nah, with the guys, Jacob answered without thinking. No wonder no girls liked him in so many years. Kathy knocked her head and went back to her room to get changed. Half an hour later, they gathered in the lobby to go to the night market. Kathy was the only girl who showed up. Ryan was still energetic, and he was thrilled that Jacob invited him. It never occurred to him that he should ask Jacob and Kathy to go alone. The girls had all already gone to bed in their rooms, and Kathy had no choice but to go with the guys, since she had already agreed to it. They took a taxi from the motel to the night market. It was busy and crowded Saturday night, and it had everything to offer. The guys were still greedy for snacks after dinner. Since the pretty girl, Kathy, was with them, they were in the mood of trying all sorts of delicious snacks. Here! Jacob bought two hot dogs and handed one to Kathy. Kathy looked at him. Although she was still a little upset, her last line of defense was broken by the hot dog Jacob handed over. She was moved by him again. 
She knew that Jacob didn't mean anything bad. Although he seemed mean to her when they were little, he still protected her. Jacob got along well with his classmates in the university, and he always helped people whenever he could. He was reliable and straightforward. She had grown up with a certain image of Jakey in her head and had imagined a whole scenario of how they would meet again. Jacob was very different from her expectations, and so was their situation. Maybe that was what upset her so much. The group wandered around as they tried different snacks. Jacob checked out some decor stands with Kathy from time to time. It was indeed a pleasant experience to hang out with classmates like this. However, a profession found itself a market in such a busy crowd. Thieves. They were too busy having fun to notice that two thieves already had their eyes on Kathy's backpack. They sneaked behind her and reached toward a slightly open pocket. Kathy just put her wallet in there after paying for a phone sticker. The guys saw some acrobats in the front, so they ran ahead in excitement. Jacob, who just got the phone sticker with Kathy, stayed behind with her. His acute hearing and sight located the thief who was reaching for her bag. Jacob grabbed the thief's wrist in a flash and pulled on it. The thief was on the ground immediately. Kathy hadn't even realized what had happened, and it startled her all of a sudden. Why are you hitting others? The other thief shouted at Jacob, pretending to be innocent. Jacob ignored them and headed towards his classmates with Kathy. However, the second thief wouldn't let go and caught up with them. Buddy, why are you hitting people for no reason? You broke his arm and you need to pay for his medical bill. The stand owners all recognized these two thieves since they came here often. However, they didn't want to cause trouble for their own businesses, so they stayed out of it. These thieves were always hanging around in the area. Even though they had been caught by the police before, they got released in a couple of days. Kathy had never seen something like this. Although she panicked, her mind was clear with Jacob's hand on her arm. Jacob, I'll go get the guys, she said. The thief, who was on the ground, stood up, pretending that his arm hurt. He circled behind Jacob and Kathy as he shouted, why did you hurt me for no reason? You're not leaving until you pay me some money. They could tell that Jacob and Kathy were not from that area. Therefore, they decided to blackmail them. Jacob looked at them calmly. With his strength and power, he wouldn't even be scared if there were 10 or 20 of them. All he was worried about was Kathy's safety. On top of that, he couldn't release his five elemental sword energies around mortals. When Jacob was thinking about how to protect Kathy as well as defeat the thieves, Ryan and the guys realized that Jacob and Kathy weren't following them. They turned back and saw the two of them circled by two hooligans. Damn it! How dare you bully my buddy! Ryan dashed their way with two unfinished hot dogs in his hands. He was the class vice president after all. Although he didn't take care of any of the class issues, he still had a title. Regarding fighting, he had no problem. A few others came over as well, and they immediately circled the two thieves. Dozens of them started the fight without a word. Those two thieves were immediately beaten up by over ten young students. Jacob looked at them in surprise. He had no idea that the guys had so much strength in them. Before he made a move, the thieves were already rolling on the ground begging for forgiveness. Suddenly, a flashing police car appeared at the exit of the night market. Damn it, let's get out of here. See you at the west exit. A guy had to drag Ryan away, who was in his battle mode as they sprang out of there. The group of people followed them to the west exit. Jacob saw the police and dragged Kathy out of there as well, since he didn't want to get into trouble. The night market was pretty big. It took them a while to get to a safe area. Damn it, I haven't even used my uppercut yet. Ryan complained as they got out of the market, waving his arms around. Kathy was out of breath. She laid her hands on her knees and looked around at the guys. 
As a good student, she had never been involved in a fight like this. However, she suddenly understood more about the friendship between the guys. Although they were notorious, the guys stuck up for each other. Even though they were risking being caught by the police, they wouldn't let their buddy get bullied and blackmailed. However, if Jacob had a bad relationship with them, they would never have fought for him. Instead of his own strength, Jacob's charm was such that everyone was willing to help him as his good friend. Even though it was a fight, she felt sadder about parting ways with the classmates whom she had profound friendships with. Would she ever be able to experience happy days like this in such a warm class again? A bus can take us back to the motel from here. Ryan read the bus information on the other side of the street and came back happily. Then, everyone followed him across the street and got on the bus to the motel. There were many empty seats on the bus since it was late at night. Ryan and the guys in the front of the bus started to discuss what just happened. Jacob turned to Kathy and sensed the reluctance to leave in her eyes. He lightly nudged her arm. Kathy, don't go. Episode 237, The Trading Convention Kathy was silent. Pretty soon, they all boarded the bus. The bus headed toward the motel noisily. Jacob, later on, we... Ryan turned around to talk to Jacob, but he swallowed the second half of the sentence when he sensed the strange looks on Jacob and Kathy's faces. He turned back to the front as if nothing happened. Give me a day to think about it, Kathy answered. Okay, Jacob nodded. He knew that he for sure would regret it if Kathy left. However, he didn't have enough courage to stop her from going to her parents after all these years. The bus arrived at the destination and the door opened. Ryan yelled, We're here! We're here! Get off the bus, everyone! He also shouted to ease the awkwardness between Jacob and Kathy. The group got off the bus and entered the motel. Come to our room to hang out later, Jacob. One of the guys shouted at Jacob excitedly. Ryan immediately pulled his ear and dragged him away. He said, I'll hang out with you. Jacob probably has something else to do. Something else? What is it? The guy didn't get the hint. Ryan kicked him into the room and closed the door behind him. Go rest. You must be exhausted from guiding the class around today, Jacob said to Kathy when they got to the door. Um... Kathy walked to her room. Jacob stood at his door and watched Kathy enter her room. He sighed lightly and entered his room afterward. Jacob turned on the TV to make the room less quiet before he went for a shower. He had been cultivating the Sword Shadow Scroll every night lately and had seen some visible improvements. He just needed an impact force to break through his openings. Snowflake hopped around impatiently in the hidden space in the necklace, so Jacob let it out of there so that it could take a hot shower as well. In a week, it consumed all of Jacob's essence replenishment pills and even sneaked into the library when Jacob let it have some free time. It used its ability to roll around on the ground to attract a bunch of girls and got all of their food from them. Jacob carried Snowflake in his hand as he walked out of the bathroom. He noticed two people standing outside the bathroom when he was just about to rest in bed. Jacob backed off half a step in panic and then realized that they were Jade and Julia. How many times did I tell you not to scare me like this, please? Jacob said to them helplessly as he sighed. Did you forget about the trading convention this weekend, Master? Jade asked. I do remember about it. Jacob set Snowflake free on the floor and replied, but I thought it was tomorrow. 
It's today, but Julia and I didn't want to disturb your time with your friend, Jade said, rolling her eyes, clearly referring to Kathy. Jacob looked at her and realized how hard it was to deal with the older sister. He glimpsed at their outfit and realized that they were in their light blue and light green flowy dresses, the ones they were in when they made their first appearance in front of him at the college. Okay, we won't do a lot of talking for now. Change into these, master. If you wore the modern clothes, you would get questioned. Jade took out an outfit and a pair of cloth shoes magically and handed them over to Jacob. Jacob looked down at the light blue robe in Jade's hand. Right away? He was surprised. Yeah, why else do you think we came here to see you tonight? Jade questioned back. Jacob thought about it, and his facial expression changed a bit. Then he took the outfit to the bathroom to get changed. Julia looked at Jade timidly and said, You are so brave to boss around Master, sis. I wasn't bossing him, I was telling the truth. Jade rolled her eyes again. Soon enough, Jacob got out of the bathroom in the robe. Jade took out a cultivation hat and put it on Jacob. Julia secretly laughed at Jacob, who looked weird in the hat. Let's not waste any time, Master. Let's go. Jade held Jacob's hand and took out a bracelet. Julia followed him over and held on to his other hand. Snowflake saw that Jacob was about to leave and hopped into his arms. Then, Jacob put it back into the hidden space. The bracelet enlarged slowly and covered up the three of them. Then, it turned into a ray of white light and shot into the sky. It only took them a few seconds to get from first heaven to fifth heaven. Jade's techniques were definitely better than Helen's. It was pitch dark on fifth heaven. The nature essence was thick and immortal mountain after mountain floating in the sky. Anyone without proficient sword flying skills would run into the hills and fall off. Some white light slowly appeared in front of them. We are almost at the trading convention, Jade said cheerfully. She commanded the bracelet to land rapidly as the three of them reached the ground steadily. It was actually another immortal mountain with the top cleaned up nicely, turning it into a flat top mountain. That was where the trading convention was located. There were white lamps on several temporary stone pillars. They were not lanterns, nor luminous pearls. However, they could light up the area near them. They looked at the trading convention's venue and found that it was almost as big as their university's entire campus. Thousands of white lights brightened up the place as if it was a lantern festival. Jade and Julia held on to each of Jacob's hands and didn't let go. Although some men noticed Jacob due to his two charming companions, no one paid too much attention to him. Jacob observed the situation around him and found it normal to see a male with three to four female companions. Everyone was dressed in long robes and dresses. If Jacob didn't know he was on Fifth Heaven, he would have thought that he was on a film set. Aside from the moving crowd, there were all kinds of temporary stands everywhere. There were treasures, elixir pills, and techniques. Don't worry, Master. No one will see through your technique. Jade whispered to Jacob. Jacob's body was giving out a dark blue light. However, he had all five elements. Um, it was Jacob's first time participating in such a trading convention, so he was very cautious and didn't wander around the stands by himself. He looked around with Jade and Julia. The flat top mountain had a large space, and there were hundreds of stalls, as well as tens of thousands of cultivators. Over half of them were here to get ready for the Nine Dragon Palace trip. Jacob shivered at the thought of tens of thousands of cultivators attacking the Nine Dragon Palace at the same time. After getting accustomed to the environment, Jacob walked around a few nearby stands. 
fire separation technique, golden light technique, feign death technique. They all seemed to be very fundamental techniques. The truth was, the real powerful techniques wouldn't be sold in the trading convention, so they only brought in these techniques to make up the numbers. What was actually useful were the elixir pills, treasures, talismans, and notes. However, Jacob didn't have to ask around, since the twins were with him. After a while, Jacob asked Julia, What makes the lamps shine on the stone pillars? Julia was surprised by the question and explained, There's nothing special about them but some simple array formations. The spirit stones under the covers are giving out light through ignition. Spirit stones? Jacob wanted more details. The spirit stone is the currency amongst cultivation sects on and above Fifth Heaven, and there are four kinds of them. Low tier, mid tier, top tier, and perfect tier. However, it's not only a currency, but also can assist with cultivation. Cultivators can reach a higher speed in cultivation by taking the nature essence from the stones. Therefore, spirit stone is a resource, and since everyone needs it, it became a currency. These are only cheap, low-tier stones, so no one would use them for cultivation. Jade explained to Jacob patiently. He nodded. Elder Liam and the others have never mentioned spirit stones to me. That's because the dragon cultivators don't need spirit stones to assist them in cultivation. The most the spirit stones could do for dragon cultivators is to power array formations. You need to know, Master, that the dragon cores in the dragon's bodies are natural cultivation treasures. Human cultivators would need to consume countless spirit stones to reach the core formation realm. Yet dragons can reach the third level easily. Julia continued. Jade couldn't help but add, Do you know that there are things that human cultivators all fight over with their lives in the Nine Dragon Palace? You know about the Nine Dragon Palace. Um, what do they want from there? Jacob asked. Spirit stones, Jade answered. There are plenty of spirit stones in the Nine Dragon Palace. There are multiple spirit stone mines under each mountain, and I heard that the Grand Palace, as well as the Nine Branch Palaces, are all made with perfect tier spirit stones. Perfect tier spirit stones. Jacob thought about the seemingly normal large black rocks in the Nine Dragon Palace. Are those the perfect tier spirit stones? There were perfect tier spirit stones in the world of cultivation, which were even more precious than gold and diamonds. Jacob remembered the tower in the Nine Dragon Palace, which was high in the sky. It was made of dark black square rocks that were half a meter in each dimension. They were all perfect tier spirit stones. Episode 238, Splurging for Snowflake It is not that easy to enter the Nine Dragon Palace. Only one out of ten survive. The danger grows at every step, and the deeper one gets, the lesser the chances of survival. Demon beasts lurk at every point in the palace. Jade warned Jacob. Demon beasts? Jacob was surprised to hear that, because he didn't encounter any of them last time. But, judging from the way the twins were talking about the Nine Dragon Palace, their knowledge all came from books. However, he didn't take their warning lightly either. There were countless treasures, as well as dangers, inside the palace. Snowflake sensed the tense atmosphere around him and felt a little unsettled inside Jacob's necklace. Being surrounded by cultivators at the convention, Jacob thought it would be okay to let Snowflake out for some time. Snowflake hopped out of the hidden space as it sensed the strong nature essence and immediately transformed into its larger form. 
You need to behave, Snowflake. We are here to buy food for you. If you don't behave, we will sell you here. Jade bent her back and pointed at its nose to give it a warning. Although Snowflake was a spirit beast, it had a high emotional quotient. It sensed Jade's threatening tone and immediately hid behind Jacob. However, most of its body was still sticking out given its size. Jacob was just about to tell her not to threaten Snowflake when a girl with a silk ribbon around her waist descended from the air and landed right in front of Jacob. Hey brother, have you seen Master Finn? Jacob was confused. The girl was a bit impatient. She looked at Jacob, dissatisfied. You look unfamiliar, and I don't think I have met you before. Are you one of Master Finn's disciples who came here for the Nine Dragon Palace? Jacob wasn't sure what to say. She then looked at Snowflake hiding behind him and commented, Your pet is a mortal creature, not even on level one. It seems like you can't be that talented either. Never mind, I'll find him myself. A tiny golden lion suddenly ran out of her right sleeve and transformed into a two-meter tall, giant golden lion. Its four paws were enveloped by fire as it carried the girl away in the blink of an eye. Jacob was astonished while Snowflake blinked and looked at the giant golden lion with its large, innocent eyes looking upset. Although it always pretended to be cute, Snowflake had self-esteem too. She thought you were a disciple of Sky Mountain sect since you were with Snowflake. Julia stepped up and laughed. Jacob gaped at the golden lion, which was already far away. He decided not to ponder about it too much and kept walking around. After a while, it suddenly occurred to him. Sky Mountain sect? Then they should probably have a 10,000-year seven-colored snow lotus. Do all the major sects have stands? Jacob asked Julia. This trading convention is a free market for the cultivators, not the sects. Usually, a few friends would rent a stand and put their belongings on display, Julia said. Um, you two have more knowledge. Help me locate the stands of the Sky Mountain sect, Jacob said eagerly. The trading convention was very crowded and noisy. There were lots of chances of finding something good. However, it wasn't easy to locate a specific stand. Sky Mountain Sect is an important sect of Sixth Heaven. Their stand should be in the middle of the venue, Julia said. Jacob followed her, and she added, There are many small sects on Fifth Heaven, and some that have specialties and strengths are located on Sixth Heaven, where the nature essence is thicker. They each have their own territories. As for the major ones with even more strength, seven or eight sects took over Seventh Heaven. The most powerful sect in the world of cultivation, Godly Cloud, took over Eighth Heaven, which is the closest to Ninth Heaven. Statuses were clearly defined by levels, as if it was a fully developed society. Judging from the number of cultivators who attended this trading convention, there were millions, maybe even tens of millions, of cultivators on 5th, 6th, 7th, and 8th heaven. Godly Cloud took up the entire 8th heaven on its own, and all the other sects continued to communicate with each other. In time, big sects would make smaller sects their subsidiaries and pick talents from them. In the meantime, smaller sects will try their best to level up onto a higher heaven. Sky Mountain Sect specializes in planting spirit herbs and medicines and raising spirit beasts. Although it is a sect on the sixth heaven, it has a pretty good relationship with a few big sects on seventh heaven. Therefore, it holds an important position on sixth heaven, Jade added. Jacob nodded in agreement. The cultivation sects are on and above Fifth Heaven, completely separated from the mortal world. Since the Dragon Tribe's members lived among the mortals, they were somewhat connected to them. 
they also had professional or personal relationships with them. The human cultivators, on the other hand, had absolutely no interest in the humans in the mortal world. Soul protection pill, transformation pill, dragon tiger pill, white lotus pill, cold plum pill. The shouts interrupted Jacob's thoughts. He turned around and saw over 30 bottles of elixir pills on a small table. The stand owner was a middle-aged cultivator in an ordinary dark blue robe. Master, those are all fake elixir pills. You don't need to go there. Jade reminded him from the side. The cultivator shouted at Jacob. You must be a cultivator from the Sky Mountain sect. Your snow lion seems to be very powerful. Buy some transformation pills for it so it can level up faster and cultivate both ice and fire elemental energy. You are trying to sell our master fake elixir pills even though you know he is from the Sky Mountain sect? Jade asked him. She glared at him until the cultivator put his stand away hastily and fled. He thought Jacob looked young and naive but wealthy. Therefore, he wanted to trick some spirit stones out of Jacob. However, he didn't expect to be seen through this easily. It was his fault to have believed that Jacob was only in the Foundation Establishment realm, which was equivalent to the first level in the Dragon World. He would have never thought that Jade and Julia, who hid their techniques on purpose, were already on low-grade 8th level. One of them alone could have shaken three to four small sects on 5th heaven. Jade smirked as the middle-aged man fled. You don't need to worry about being scammed because we're here, Master. Jacob smiled back at them. What they said was true. He wouldn't fall for it even if he wanted to, since Jade and Julia were by his side. Snowflake was having trouble moving around in the crowd since it couldn't fly yet. Therefore, it turned back into its smaller form and followed Jacob at his heels like a white fluffy ball rolling around. After walking for a while, Jacob saw several adjacent stands surrounded by quite a few people. They seemed to be doing pretty well. These are all stands from Sky Mountain Sect, Master. Julia pointed ahead. He squeezed in with Jade and Julia and found that the things they were selling here were indeed more valuable than those at other stands. The elixir pills are legit, but the techniques are pretty ordinary and the spirit herbs are not ripe enough. Maybe purchasing some elixir pills is a good choice to feed Snowflake. Julia turned to Jacob and said, How much are these elixir pills for? Jade stepped up and asked the disciple from Sky Mountain sect. Basic essence replenishment pills are 15 low-tier spirit stones per bottle, and there are 10 pills in a bottle. Basic spirit replenishment pills are 25 low-tier spirit stones per bottle. Basic detox pills are 20 low-tier spirit stones per bottle. We only have these three elixirs left. I'll take all the essence replenishment pills and spirit replenishment pills. Jade was very straightforward as well. The cultivators surrounding the stand thought the pretty looking girl was only planning on buying a few bottles. They had no idea that she was going to buy everything on the stand. Continuing to surprise the shoppers and stand owners alike, Jade asked, do the nearby stands all have the same price for these elixir pills? The stunned Sky Mountain sect disciple nodded in hesitation. He was only expecting to sell a few items with the help of his fellow disciples and get a handful of spirit stones to buy some defensive treasures with them. He never thought that he could actually sell out all the basic elixir pills. The reality was that these basic elixir pills had very low effects, so they wouldn't be of great use in actual battles. All right, then I'll take all the essence replenishment pills and spirit replenishment pills on all five stands, Jade said. The cultivators who were in earshot gasped. Although the essence replenishment pills and spirit replenishment pills weren't very expensive, 
There were at least hundreds of bottles on all five stands. She was buying over a thousand elixir pills at once. Get that ascendance grass too, sister. We can feed them to Snowflake as treats, Julia said to Jade. Okay. Jade nodded and asked the disciple, How much is the ascendance grass? Twelve, twelve low-tier spirit stones per bundle? The disciple of the Sky Mountain sect was already stuttering. Okay, there should be around thirty bundles here. I'll take them all, Jade said lightly. The cultivators gasped again. When the cultivators were wondering what the girl's background was and why they were spending spirit stones like crazy, they both turned around and said, Should we take all the detox pills too, Master? Snowflake eats everything, and the detox pills can cleanse its body. Everyone turned around to look at Jacob. These beautiful twin sisters from the Foundation Establishment Realm are spending spirit stones like this on their master's order? They thought, Who is this young man dressed in regular cultivation clothing? He must be a talented genius of a big sect. Get them all, so we don't have to come back often, Jacob said. He was so calm that it drove the cultivators around them crazy. In fact, even the Foundation Establishment Realm cultivators of a regular sect on Fifth Heaven could only make 30 low-tier spirit stones in a month. Okay, Master. Jade took out over 40 mid-tier spirit stones from her ring and put them in front of the disciple without a word. Each mid-tier spirit stone equaled 100 low-tier spirit stones, but the help it could provide in cultivation was way more than what a hundred low-level spirit stones could do. The fact that she took out 40 mid-tier spirit stones casually startled the surrounding cultivators. Even the disciples from Sky Mountain sect were shocked. They collected all the elixir pills from their fellow disciples and had never thought that the pills could get them so many spirit stones. Jade and Julia put the elixir pills and spirit herbs into their opal rings. Snowflake, in its tiny form, smelled the delicious elixir pills and hopped into Jacob's arms excitedly. Jacob patted its little head. This time, we have enough for you to eat, Snowflake. Uh... The surrounding cultivators were all speechless. If these mid-tier spirit stones are traded into low-tier spirit stones... There would be over 4,000 of them, and all these will be used to feed this tiny thing? Even the ferocious-looking golden lion wouldn't get such a treatment. Oh, do you guys have 10,000-year seven-colored snow lotuses? Jacob asked casually. Some of the surrounding cultivators actually lost their balance at that question. Episode 239, First Fight 10,000 year seven colored snow lotuses, the ultimate treasure of the Sky Mountain sect. It was said that the Sky Mountain sect only had three of them, and this young man was trying to purchase them? No, we don't have any. The disciple of Sky Mountain sect was stupefied. Oh, Jacob wanted to ask them how he could purchase one. However, he realized that it might not be a good idea after seeing how everyone reacted. I've put everything away, Master. Although Snowflake is greedy, these can still last a month. Jade and Julia returned to Jacob's either side. One month? Over forty mid-tier spirit stones? The people around them were getting more and more agitated and curious at the same time. The disciple of Sky Mountain sect who sold them the pills became sure that the immature snow lion was definitely not an ordinary snow lion, but a godly beast. Let's go, 
Jacob carried Snowflake and left as the twins followed on both sides. They just spent over 40 mid-tier spirit stones without even blinking their eyes. They asked Liam for the spirit stones a while ago, and he casually gave them 100 mid-tier spirit stones. The North Atlantic had a strong financial background with abundant resources. On top of that, they didn't need the spirit stones to cultivate. Even for powering array formations, they would use top-tier spirit stones. Therefore, they couldn't care less for these mid-tier spirit stones. While the astonished cultivators watched them walk away, Jacob left with Jade and Julia and disappeared in the crowd at the trading convention. Jade, how many spirit stones are left? Jacob turned his head and asked Jade. We still have about 60 mid-tier spirit stones. Do you want to buy elixirs or treasures? Jade asked. Since such trading conventions were unofficial events, organized by cultivators, the objects at the event were not very rare. Jade had brought 100 mid-tier spirit stones to buy some elixir pills for Snowflake to help it improve its cultivation strength. I want to buy beads of wood, fire, and earth to match the metal and water beads on my necklace, Jacob said. That's easy. I think I've seen some of them somewhere here. Julia had been observing the objects of each booth, and she immediately took Jacob to three booths to buy the beads. The payment for three beads was only half a mid-tier spirit stone. If Jacob had to collect them by himself, it would take him forever. But at the trading convention, he bought them with great ease. Attaching the newly bought beads to the necklace, he now had a five elemental necklace. Through the necklace, Jacob felt the five beads were interacting with each other and forming a cycle, helping him absorb the five elemental essence of nature. This process would greatly help Jacob's cultivation of the Sword Shadow Scroll. While the dragon core in his body was an internal monitor of five elemental essences, the five elemental necklace was an external source that balanced the five elements in small amounts. Having bought food for Snowflake and three beads for himself, Jacob was satisfied with this trip. He bought a flexible dragon leash for 120 low-tier spirit stones. Taking off the little bell Jade and Julia gave him, he attached the bell to the dragon leash before putting the leash around Snowflake's neck. Snowflake looked quite cute with the golden bell on its snow-white fur. The special flexibility of the dragon leash made sure the leash wouldn't break even when Snowflake changed into a bigger size. Since Snowflake followed Jacob everywhere, Jade and Julia could still find Jacob's location with the bell. However, with the bell attached to Snowflake's neck, he didn't have to worry about Jade and Julia suddenly appearing by his side especially while taking a shower like today. Snowflake, who was in Jacob's arms, suddenly started making noises. It wriggled while nudging Jacob's arm with its mouth. Having spent some time with Snowflake, Jacob was familiar with its signals. He was wriggling because he wanted to tinkle. Jacob immediately let it go. Snowflake jumped to the ground and rushed out of the trading convention the jingling golden bell dazzling on its white fur. Jacob sighed. The little creature had to choose this moment to go to the bathroom when we're in the territory of the cultivating sex. Resigned, Jacob followed Snowflake with Jade and Julia, who covered their mouths to stop giggling. Away from the illumination of the stone columns, the spot Snowflake chose was dimly lit. The small body of Snowflake hid in a cluster of bushes and was busy doing its business. Suddenly, laughter came from behind them. They turned and found six male cultivators in different robes who had surrounded by forming a semicircle. This spot was in the wilderness, blocked by a massive boulder from the venue of the trading convention. Jacob knew that he and the sisters had been followed ever since they bought the elixirs. Three Foundation Establishment Realm cultivators, 
two of whom were beautiful girls, had casually taken out over 40 mid-tier spirit stones and were careless with the prices when they purchased things. Naturally, their fortune and the sister's beauty had caught the thug's eyes. The lowest level of the cultivators attending the trading convention was Foundation Establishment Realm. Among the six robbers, three were in mid-tier Foundation Establishment Realm, while the others were in the top tier. Jacob was now at the second level, which was the equivalent to mid-tier Foundation Establishment Realm, while Jade and Julia were seemingly only at low-tier Foundation Establishment Realm. They were hiding their real strength to not attract too much attention. The difference in the strengths of the two sides was quite evident. Even with the Spirit Beast, which had not reached even level one, Jacob and the sisters were no match for them in strength. Snowflake, are you done? Jacob turned his head and asked in a low voice. Snowflake trotted to him from the cluster of grass. When it found Jacob was surrounded, it immediately changed into a magnificent spirit beast of one meter tall, growling. Without hesitation, the six men threw their treasures at them. Snowflake roared with rage and dashed toward the treasures fearlessly. Snowflake, come back! Jacob beckoned at Snowflake before taking out a long spear from his hidden space. Dragon Gold Spear The long spear grew longer in the air. The silver body immediately turned into dazzling gold. They indeed have powerful treasures! One of the six robbers yelled, and they combined the power of their treasures to block Jacob's gold spear. The six of them came together to rob Jacob and the sisters, fearing the rich guy would have powerful defense treasures with him. They were confident that his powerful treasures would become a part of their loot. The gold spear collided with the six treasures and bounced them off. But the gold spear couldn't stop its momentum and shot into the ground. This fellow doesn't know how to handle treasures. Let's go get him, the leader of the gang shouted. However, they were sadly mistaken. The reason Jacob was not good at using the treasure was because he had never used it. He had only defended using the gold spear to stop them from attacking Snowflake. Jade, Julia, you stay behind, Jacob ordered before shooting out two beams of sword energy from his fingers. Ever since he began cultivating, he had never engaged in a real fight and he had not tried the power of the sword array formation. Five elemental sword energy? Trivial technique. They blocked Jacob's two sword energies with treasures and moved forward in their semicircle when they saw a huge fire loop crashing toward them. The fire array formation. It was made up of 16 fire elemental sword energies. If they were trapped by it, they would be severely burned. Array formations could trap strong enemies inside and defeat them. A dense rain of sword energies shot toward them from high up in the sky. There were three groups, and each group contained 16 metal elemental sword energy, forming the metal elemental sword array formation. The seemingly random sword energies were, in fact, interacting with each other and strengthening each other. This was the power of sword array formation. Three mid-tier and three top-tier cultivators of the Foundation Establishment Realm were stunned by the sword array formation falling from the sky. We were wrong. He's a cultivator of the core formation realm. Let's go. The leader threw out a white gong before fleeing. The dense golden sword energy beams shot into the gong and turned it into a sieve. The difference between the core formation realm and the foundation establishment realm was drastic. In the core formation realm, the cultivators could use advanced treasures and advanced cultivation techniques. Even six foundation establishment realm cultivators didn't dare to mess with one cultivator of the core formation realm. In fact, Jacob's cultivation strength was indeed at the second level, which was the equivalent of the Foundation Establishment Realm. However, 
Jacob's powerful sword array formation made them think he was a cultivator of the core formation realm, which was the equivalent of third level. When the sword array formation was unleashed, the sky dimmed with its power. After all, the sword array formation was like any other array formations which borrowed the nature essence instead of drawing on the strength of the cultivator. The six cultivators of the Foundation Establishment Realm were scrambling to escape when Jade and Julia, standing beside Jacob, suddenly released an overwhelming suppression. Nascent Soul Realm Cultivators! Their legs became jelly instantly. In this low-level trading convention, they encountered not only a disguised cultivator of the Core Formation Realm, but two masters of the Nascent Soul Realm. Without thinking, they dropped to the ground and bowed to Jacob and the sisters. They were asking for death to rob a cultivator of the core formation realm. A master of nascent soul realm could kill the six of them with only one finger. In the whole fifth heaven, there were only four masters of the nascent soul realm. The four masters of the nascent soul realm were leading the four most powerful cultivation sects in fifth heaven. Shakily, they lifted their heads slightly and saw that the young man, two beautiful girls, and the spirit beast were gone. Episode 240, A Familiar Face Master, are you okay? A man in a gray cotton robe helped their frightened leader up. The leader had blood all over his face. Looking at his treasure on the ground, he found that it had lost all its nature essence. The robbery was a bad bargain. He wiped the blood off his face and gritted his teeth. As a cultivator of the late stage of the Foundation Establishment Realm, he was a half-master in the Fifth Heaven, but today he was defeated so pathetically and almost lost his life. Let's go. The leader caught his breath and picked up the damaged treasure before leading his gang back into the trading convention. Boss, there's a girl on level one Chi Refinement Realm. With two teeth gone, one of his subordinates pointed at a spot in the trading convention and reported. She dares to come here without reaching the Foundation Establishment Realm? Damn, let's rob her. The leader spat out a mouthful of bloodied spit before taking his gang to the direction of the girl. They had only taken five steps when a surge of suffocating suppression pushed at them from the sky. Another master of the nascent soul realm... Their well-beaten bodies dropped to the ground without any resistance. The girl had been standing alone at the edge of the trading convention, but suddenly a nascent Soul Realm cultivator appeared beside her. Kathy, look around and purchase whatever catches your eye, the nascent Soul Realm cultivator told the girl. Judging from the force of the suppression, this was a master at the top tier of the nascent Soul Realm. The amiable old lady held the hand of a puzzled Kathy, leading her into the heart of the trading convention. All the people with any amount of cultivation strength at the trading convention could see that the disciple of the master of the nascent soul realm was only a girl of level one chi refinement realm, which in the dragon world was the first level of the spirit concentration scroll. It was a great fortune to be a disciple of a master of the top-tier nascent soul realm. Besides, the girl seemed to have no special cultivation talent. Kathy was dizzy from seeing all kinds of objects at the convention, and the people nearby all looked at her with envy, bafflement, and doubt. Four beams of light shot toward the trading convention. Sensing the suppressions of two nascent Soul Realm Masters nearby, the four nascent Soul Realm Masters leading Fifth Heaven all came out to investigate. However, they had now lost track of the two Masters. Instead, 
they sensed the overwhelming cultivation strength of another master. It was quite extraordinary that the trading convention for cultivators of the foundation establishment realm had attracted three masters of the nascent soul realm. They came to the sky above the trading convention and sensed that this master had reached the top tier. They hovered in the air, exchanging a look with each other. The four of them were only at low-tier nascent soul realm, and the combined force of the four of them was no match for a master of the top tier. The nascent soul realm cultivators of the top tier had the potential to enter the soul formation realm. Most of the masters of nascent soul realm stayed in the low tier all their lives because the elevations in this realm were more difficult than all the previous levels combined. They didn't know that the master of the top tier nascent soul realm at the convention was, in fact, a master of the god transformation realm. On one hand, the old lady didn't want to shock them with her true power. On the other hand, she didn't want people to trouble them. That was why she disguised herself as a cultivator of top-tier nascent soul realm. The four cultivators exchanged a look before flying back to their respective cultivation places. If the newcomer had been a cultivator of low-tier nascent soul realm, they would have shown their faces and their ownership of the territory. However, with a top-tier master whose temperament they knew nothing about, they thought it was better not to confront her at all. The old woman strolled through the stalls with Kathy, and anyone who saw this white-haired old lady knew better than to mess with her. Wherever they went, the crowd gave way to them. Kathy, take whatever you like, the old lady told Kathy genuinely. Glancing at the glittering objects in one booth, Kathy hesitated before picking up an exquisite emerald bracelet. Grandma, I'll take this but I'll pay for it. The old lady smiled. Kathy, the things here are not paid for with money. She took out a mid-tier spirit stone and tossed it at the young vendor. I believe it's enough for this bracelet. The young cultivator caught the spirit rock with apprehension. Grandmaster, you don't have to pay for it. With her cultivation power, she could have taken all the items on the trading convention, and no one would have dared to utter a word. After all, any cultivator who could reach top-tier nascent soul realm was as old as 500 to 600 years. They didn't understand why this grandmaster had taken an ordinary girl as her disciple. After all, all the masters of her level were put on pedestals by their respective cultivating sects and didn't take disciples anymore. Kathy slid the pretty emerald bracelet onto her wrist happily. It glittered in the illumination of the nearby stone columns. Thank you, Grandma. She turned to the old lady and thanked her. I'm glad you like it. Let's have a look at other stuff. The old lady's smile was full of wrinkles. Immediately, Kathy helped the shaky old lady to other booths. The cultivators watching them were envious of the girl who had a Grand Master as her protector. Obviously, the girl was not raised by the Grand Master. She had to have recently become the Grand Master's disciple. The center of the fair was more lively and boisterous than the night markets on the mortal land. Kathy was strolling through the convention with one arm supporting the old lady when a familiar figure entered her sight. Familiar figure and familiar profile beautiful twin sisters accompanied this man. Jacob was choosing some small red flowers when he felt a strong suppression come his way. With the red flowers in hand, he turned and saw Kathy and her old neighbor walking toward him. Jacob's mind became blank for a moment. How come Kathy was here? Was she not a mortal after all? If he had not wanted to come back and look for the small red flowers that Susan had once mentioned, he would have left the convention with Jade and Julia by now. But he had returned, and now Kathy was here. Meanwhile, Kathy stared at him with astonishment, then bafflement, and finally, silence. Kathy, why are you here? 
In a daze, Jacob walked over and asked. He even rubbed his eyes, suspecting his eyes were playing tricks on him, or he had seen an illusion. But Snowflake left his side and ran to Kathy with affection, proving that the girl standing before him was indeed Kathy. Kathy was dressed in a white cultivation robe, just like himself. The old lady by her side looked timid, but she emitted such a powerful spirit strength that no one dared to look her in the eye. This spirit suppression was almost as powerful as that of Kenneth. Jacob! Kathy whispered his name with a sad expression. Suddenly, she walked forward and threw herself into his arms. Before Jacob could react, tears began to flow out of her eyes. Idiot! You are such an idiot! Holding Jacob, Kathy beat his chest with her fist. She stood on her tiptoes and wound her arms around his neck, holding him tightly. She placed her face against the back of his neck and cried harder. In vain! I've waited in vain! Tears flowed down her chin and wet Jacob's robe. Those were tears of regret, resignation, and sadness. The hundreds of cultivators nearby gasped at the sight. The only thing they were sure of was that the man had let down the disciple of the Grand Master of the nascent soul realm, and he was doomed. <laughs>